All right, uh, moving right along to the Medicaid tab here. There's a few changes that we've made. Uh, we have added a new field here for special program code. In ANSI 5010, this particular Lupin segment would only allow you to submit EPSDT uh, claims. So it would, uh, EPSDT was the only value that you could submit here. Version 17 and with 5010, there are four additional federal programs that you can submit claims for, including disability, physically handicapped children's program, second opinion or surgery, and special federal funding. We wanted to make sure that regardless of the federal program that you want to participate in or file claims for, you had the ability to do so. Adding that field allows you to do it. EPSDT was not removed. We still have that field available. It was just broken out from that particular Lupin segment in 5010. All right. Um, let's move over here to the condition tab. There's a couple of changes that you're going to see here. This one is one of the major changes that are coming with 5010, and that's right down here, condition codes. Who knows what condition codes are? Any idea? They are exactly like diagnosis codes. They are specific values that are required on certain claims. They previously were only available on uh, institutional claims or UBs. Those condition codes are now allowed in 5010 on professional claims. And you can imagine that if an insurance carrier can find a reason to include something that you have never heard of in order to up their rejection rate, they're going to do it. So we have moved those condition codes out of the UB section in Metasoft into the core portion of the case so that you have the ability to submit those, uh, those codes on a professional claim uh, if the insurance carrier requires you to do that. They are just like diagnosis codes in that they are very specific values. You can't just type in there whatever condition you want. You'd need to check with your insurance carriers about what they're going to require there. Um, up here, we have the nature of condition. This dropdown has been uh, significantly increased to different values that are allowed in 5010. I believe that the nature of condition only had three values there in previous versions of Metasoft. There's more that are allowed with version uh, with 5010, and so we added those in here with, uh, with version 17. Um, let me move over here to EDI. Timely filing indicator. Do you ever have timely filing issues? Never? Yes. Nobody ever has timely filing issues. All right, so here is one circumstance where we've taken a field that we already had and we added a drop down to it. There's only certain values that are allowed on an ANSI claim in the timely filing field. So we have changed this from a free text where we expect you to type a 10 to a drop down that will let you pick exactly why. So if there were to be a natural disaster here in Arizona, which doesn't ever happen, then you could choose uh, natural disaster. Now, in reality, a lot of these other things do happen. So you'll have the English equivalent that you'll be able to submit there. We've done that with a lot of different fields that are there um, in, in version 17. Now, I want to come over here to the Diagnosis tab and ask you guys, what do you see that is different here? It's now on, you, it's now on the miscellaneous page. Um, do you already have version 17? I do. You already have version 17, all right. It's not on the miscellaneous page, it's somewhere else, but somebody who doesn't have 17, tell me what's missing. I thought you guys would know these screens like the back of your hand. The pop-up box is missing, that's exactly right. We're also missing the EDI notes field. There were these big fields there that were free text that you could type pop-up notes that would appear in office hours, they would appear on your EDI claims if you were doing a claim level uh, documentation that you needed to submit. Those have been moved off of this particular screen. Now, why have they been moved off of this screen? Anybody know? Anybody guess? 
All right, well this is in preparation for ICD-10. ICD-10 is going to do what to the number of diagnosis codes that you have to submit? Increase them by three times. There are three times as many diagnosis codes in ICD-10 as there were in ICD-10, or in ICD-9. Um, that means you're going to have to get very, very specific with your codes meaning you're going to have to use more. ANSI 5010 expands the number of diagnosis codes that can go on an electronic claim from 8 to 12. So if we come over here to our data entry and we change our number of diagnosis codes to 12, if we come in here to our case, come up here to our diagnosis screen, there are now 12 available. We have to give you the ability to submit as many codes as they will allow. If we don't, there's going to be cases where you can't submit a claim that you need to. We don't want that to happen. Now, there was no way for me to give you 12 diagnosis codes on this screen and leave those other things there. So I had to move them. Those fields moved over here to the comment tab. The comment tab used to just have this big long free text field where you could type whatever you wanted for the case. We've now moved the allergies and notes, which are your pop-up notes, right up here. And you're also going to see a new section here called EDI notes. The EDI notes used to look exactly like the allergies and notes. And when you had to do a claim level EDI note, how did you do it? Does anybody, did anybody ever have to do that before? where you had to type at NTE, then a colon, or, and type a whole bunch of, of <coughs> excuse me, values out in order to get an attachment on the claim. Anybody ever have to do that? No? Then I'm skipping it. <coughs> excuse me. But these, these did move over here. Okay, insurance carrier. Here's one where I am absolutely sure that there will be insurance carriers out there chomping at the bit to reject your claims. Insurance carrier types in Metasoft version 16 and earlier, how many were there that you could enter? Anybody know? About eight, six or eight? And they corresponded back to the old HICFA form. Up at the top, there was the type of claim where you could have Medicare, Medicaid, other, and there were those eight boxes up there along the top. And those were the only values that Metasoft had in there. With 5010, the, the number of values that can be submitted as the insurance carrier type has been greatly increased. And specifically one that I am worried about that has been added is right down here at the bottom. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it right here. Commercial insurance company. So ANSI 5010 allows insurance carriers to say they are commercial. That didn't exist before. They were all submitted as other. You would be very delusional if you didn't think that there's going to be commercial carriers who are going to say, you know what? I can reject a whole bunch of claims by changing my requirement right there. It's going to happen, they play that game. So we wanted to make sure you had those fields and that has been expanded out with version 17. Um, another legacy of the paper claims is related to the providers. We did this with the patients before, it's now on the providers as well. We have added middle name to replace middle initial. Middle initial is a legacy of the old paper HICFA form and uh, on ANSI claims they expect middle name. Now, did any of you have to ever do transaction level EDI notes or documentations, attachments? No transaction level either? I'll skip that one. Any purchased service where you're purchasing from an outside lab that's contracting for and you're billing for them? None of that? Okay, we'll skip over that one too. Um, what about NDC codes? Ugh, I hear something that, 
We, we have an enthusiasm winner. Maybe for the, the bad level of enthusiasm, I say NDC codes and you go, ugh. So why don't you like NDC codes? Previous versions of Metasoft, you would have to go through and fill in the NDC code specifically for each time that you entered in that procedure code, even though the code's gonna be the same every time you enter in the J code, right? Yeah, and, My version's a little older than that, but, and it, was a lot more it was a lot more complicated. This was added, I don't know, um, I have to, it was added a couple versions ago that you could actually enter it. The problem was that you could enter it, but you had to enter it for this patient and the next patient and the next patient. So with version 17, we made a huge change to that in that we moved or copied all of those fields here to your procedure code. I know I'm not in a J code, but it's the easiest one for me to click on. Right here, we let you default the NDC code, unit price, and unit of measurement on the procedure code level, and then every time you use that procedure code, that exact same code's gonna carry over onto the transaction and go out on the claim in the right place. So uh, we really wanted to make that a whole lot easier for you. Yay, Yay. all right, enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. There's another big change with version 17 that I'm not going to show you because I am not the expert in it. I'm not actually not the product manager over it, but I wanted to let you know that it existed. It's a product known as revenue management that will allow you to do a lot more with your electronic claims than uh, you previously had in the old um, direct modules. It comes standard with version 17. You don't, need to, uh, you don't need to pay any software fees. The only thing that you need to pay is a, uh, a setup fee with your reseller that you can talk to them about that with ASCOMP. They have people who can help you with the quotes on that, help you get it set up. This will allow you to do eligibility. It will allow you to uh, submit your claims, uh, process ERA files, and do it in a much uh, more clean manner. So on an ERA file, for example, the old direct modules within Metasoft, when you had the ERA that you were posting, the 835, you either had to take the entire file or none of it, right? Because it would go through and post everything regardless of what you wanted to do with it or not. It would go process that file, dump everything in, and in a lot of cases, mess up your accounts. With revenue management, you have the ability to go through and modify those things as they come through. Say, I want to post this one, I don't want to post this one, and automatically process it the way that you want to, not... Um... <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, and this, like I said, this software, it comes with version 17. You do, you do not need to pay any additional software fees to uh, to your reseller or to McKesson.